Well, happy Friday, everybody. Thank you for being with me. I'm Pastor Steve, and today we are in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning our reading of Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount. I also want to remind everyone that our theme at First Baptist Church this year is Jesus is too good to keep to yourself. Jesus really is too good to keep to yourself. So who have you talked to this week about Jesus? Who have you invited to church this week? Jesus is too good to keep to ourselves. So let's start talking to others. All right. The Sermon on the Mount is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. Um, it's beautiful. It's challenging. Um, life-changing. And in many ways, very freeing. As a pastor now for uh, almost 50 years, not quite, but pushing it, um, I, I've become more and more convinced that Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, what Paul describes as the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, and the way Paul defines love in 1 Corinthians 13, love is are some of the more important passages in the Bible because as we grow in Christ and become more like him, those, those three sections of Scripture, I think, define what it looks like to be more like Jesus Christ. And those are the things we want the Holy Spirit to develop in us, what he teaches in the Sermon on the Mount, 1 Corinthians 13, and Galatians in Galatians chapter five, and um, and I think for for pastors for ministers, these things are important. And in modern decades, not not recent, but for decades now, we we've, we've too often ignored these things when it comes to clergy and churches. Churches are guilty of it. Ministers are guilty of it. Focusing too much on on traits and talents and skills and abilities and accomplishments and not enough on character. And, and we see it when, when talented, well-known, quote-unquote, so-called successful pastors fall into grievous sin because we haven't focused on character nearly enough. Character matters. And when you read the Sermon on the Mount, you can't get away from that. This, what Jesus teaches in this chapter is not always easy, but it's powerful and freeing when we, when we grow in these areas and we develop this. I want us to read together, starting at verse 38. He says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. James in chapter 5 says something similar. Verse 40, if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let them have your coat as well. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with them too. Give to him who asks of you and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You've heard that it was said. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you are to be perfect, complete, mature, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And then over in the same chapter earlier, starting at verse 11, Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds, all kinds of evil against you because of me because of your faith in me and your relationship with me. Verse 12, rejoice and be glad. What? Rejoice and be glad. 
for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This isn't our way, but it is Jesus' way that the afterlife is more important than this life. I'm not sure most lost people in America, when they look at us, when they look at the church, especially Bible-believing conservative Christians, see us obeying this teaching very much. I think lost people in America, for the most part, when they look at us, more often than not see us more like Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane than evening Jesus was arrested with with our sword drawn and ready to fight. I think they see us more like Peter than what Jesus teaches here because more often than not, we probably act more like Peter than what Jesus teaches here. It takes a strong believer to do what Jesus said here. And um, I'm not always obedient. But the longer I live, the more I realize Jesus had it right. And my prayer is that more of us become strong and begin acting like Jesus taught in today's world that hurts us and persecutes us, that at times hates us and disagrees with us and attacks us because the power is in obeying Jesus. It is not in drawing the sword like Peter did. Scary, but so powerful. And it's the word of God. I'll see you Sunday with a message from the scripture, message from the Lord, and then Monday as we look at chapter six of this Sermon on the Mount. God bless you, everybody.